What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this next video, what we gotta do is take these three expressions here, we have to factor out the greatest common factor, or there may be multiple factors, and then we have to simplify. So starting with number one, we've got three x to the power of four, y to the power of four, plus nine x to the three y, minus 12 x to the power of four, y to the power of two, plus six x squared y to the power of five. So first thing I'm gonna look for is the coefficients in front, the constants. Out of the constants, is there a factor that we could take out? And notice between three, nine, 12, and six, we can take out a three. So we could take out, I'll write it over here. We could take out a three, and then we move on to the variables. So notice that we have the x variables in each of the expressions. And what we can take out is x to the power of the lowest exponent. So we got x to the power of four, x to the power of three, x to the power of four, and then x to the power of two. Out of all of those, x to the power of two has the lowest exponent. And then between y to the power of four, y to the power of, this is like y to the power of one, y to the power of two, and then y to the power of five, we could take out a y to the power of one. Now, let's say that, for example, that this last term, just wanna mention this, that this was just a six x squared, there was no y variable here, then we wouldn't be able to take out a y because y wouldn't be present in all of the expressions or all of the terms. But because there is a y present in all of the terms, we could, do, uh, we could take out y to the power of the lowest exponent, which is one, so three x squared y is the greatest common factor. So what this here is gonna equal, three x squared y, and then what we would do to figure out what's left is we could take each of these terms and then we could just divide it by that greatest common factor that we took out to see what is left. So if we take this first term divided by 3x squared y, notice the threes would cancel out, x to the power of four divided by x to the two gives us x to the two, y to the four divided by y to the one, we subtract the exponents, that would be y to the three. So over here, this would end up being x to the two, y to the three, and then uh, if we take the nine x cubed y divided by three x squared y, what would we have? We would end up nine divided by three is three, x to the power of three divided by x to the power of two is just x to the power of one, three minus two is just one, and then notice the y's cancel out. So this would end up being plus three x, right? And if you continue that pattern, take this divided by this, notice there's a negative here, uh, 12 divided by three is four, x to the power of four divided by x to the two is two, and then we'll have y to the two divided by y to the one, which is leave us with y to the one, we subtract the exponents. Six divided by three, two, x two divided by x two, nothing, y to the five divided by y to the one gives us y to the four. And so this here ends up being the final answer. Notice that with that remaining expression in the brackets, we can't take anything out. Moving on to number two, we got six, three minus x squared minus three minus x to the power of three plus eight times three minus x. So notice with the coefficients, we got six, there's a negative one here and then there's an eight. Out of all of those, can't take anything out, there's nothing common. And then notice that the bracket three minus x is common in all of them. So we could take out a three minus x and we could take out three minus x to the power of the lowest exponent. We have a two, three, over here is the one. So we could only take out a three minus x to the power of one. If this was like a three minus x to the power of five, then we could take out a three minus x squared. That would be the lowest exponent. But in this case, it's just a one here. So if we take out a three minus x, what would we be left with? Well, we would still be left with six, but we took out a three minus x, so there's one more three minus x left here because there's two of them. So we'd have a six three minus x like that minus three minus x to the power of three, we took out one of them, so there would still be two three minus x's left. We took out this whole three minus x, there's only one here, since we took it out, there's an eight left in square brackets like that. And so from here, what you wanna do is you just wanna simplify 
this square bracket. So the three minus X, I'm gonna write the final answer here. That would still be there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simplify this square bracket here. So we'd have, notice the six we can distribute in the bracket. We'd have 18 minus six X minus three minus X squared. If we foil that out two brackets, we'd have nine minus six X plus X squared like that. And then we'd have a plus eight in square brackets. So here we have 18 minus six X distribute the uh, negative inside that bracket. Like that. Oh, let me just double check. Yeah, it looks all fine to me. And then from here, you can just simplify this bracket, take all the like terms, combine them. So I'm going to do that over here for the final step. So notice the x squared. That's by itself. Let's go in order of degree. So we'll have negative x squared here. And then notice that the negative 6x and the positive 6x, actually those net out to zero, which is nice. So there's no x term. And then 18 minus nine is nine plus eight gives us uh, 17. So this would end up being 17 over here. And so that ends up being the final. Answer. Another way this could be formatted, they could maybe take this negative, put it in front. So another way this could be shown is minus three minus x, uh, x squared minus 17, like that. We switch all of the signs in that bracket. And then maybe they could take this negative and then distribute it in this bracket. So this could be like x minus three, x squared minus 17. Right, so this, 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 they're all the same answer. So just in case maybe this is a multiple choice question, make sure that you're looking for different formats that this could be in. You might get this as your answer, and you may not see this on a multiple choice test. You may see one of these. So make sure that your, your answer may not necessarily be wrong. Just play around with it a bit and see if you can get one of the formats. Right, but either of these formats is, uh, is correct. And then moving on to number three, we got two X cubed times X minus Y plus four X squared times X minus Y squared minus eight X times Y minus X to the power of three. So here, notice that first off with the constants in front, we could take out a two. That's gonna be part of the factor we could take out. Notice X cubed, X squared and X, those are common factors, take out the one with the lowest exponent, x to the power one. So we could take out an x. And then notice the brackets, we got x minus y, we got x minus y to the power of two. And then over here we have y minus x to the power of three. So notice that it's almost the same, but this bracket is different than these two, but we can actually take this expression, we can take this bracket and we can rewrite it to get this bracket. So notice that the y minus x to the power of three, the way we could take the y minus x and change it to an x minus y is we could just switch the signs, but if we switch the signs, we have to factor out a negative one from this, and then it would become negative y plus x. All of the signs would change, which would be the same as x minus y, like that. And then all of that would still be to the power of three. Right, so you gotta be careful when you factor out that negative to get the x minus y here, the negative one stays inside the bracket, inside the exponent. And so from here, it's like negative one times this, and because you're multiplying, remember, whenever you're multiplying things and there's an exponent, you could take each part to that exponent. So we could take the negative one to the power of three, and then we could take x minus y to the power of three, like that. And then negative one to the power of three gives us a negative one. Negative one to the power of any odd exponent is gonna be a negative one. And then we just have the x minus y to the power of three. So this and this are the exact same thing. Now I wanna mention that if we had a y minus x to the power of a even number, whether that be four, six, two, 10, 12, let's say as to the power of four, if we followed the same procedure, at this point we would have negative one to the power of an even exponent. Negative one to the power of an even exponent would always give you a positive. Sorry, this would be four as well. So x minus or uh, y minus x to the power of any even exponent 
is going to be x is going to be the same as x minus y to that even exponent because that negative one cancels out. But if it's to an odd exponent, you can't just say y minus x to the power of three is the same as x minus y to the power of three. There's always going to be that negative in front. So just want to mention that. So if we take this and sub it in for this expression, remember we still have the negative eight x in front. We're not touching that, but we're putting this in front. And then notice that the negative one, and then that can multiply with the negative. 8x and that would turn into positive 8x. You know what? Let's just put this in a different line. So just so you can see it clearly. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this. And then taking this, plugging it in for this, Everything's going to multiply negative 8 times x times negative 1 times x minus y to the power of 3. And then the negative 8 and the negative 1, that turns into positive 8. And we still have the x. And now we got the x minus y to the power of 3, like that. And so now this bracket is the same as all of these brackets. And so now we could take out more factors than just that 2x. So we could take out a 2 x, but we could also take out an x minus y to the power of 1. That's the lowest exponent, right? We got 1, 2, 3. So x minus y to the power of 1 is the lowest one we could take out. And so what's going to be left, you could take this divided by this, the x minus y's cancel out, the 2's cancel out, x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 1 gives us x squared, like that. And you could do this work kind of on the side here. Uh, some people do it in their head. I recommend probably just writing it out. It's going to take a little longer, but it's going to uh, have less risk of making a mistake. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. x squared divided by x to the 1 is x. x minus y to the power of 2 divided by x minus y to the power of 1. There's still an x minus y to the power of 1 left. So this would be plus 2x x minus y left here. And then we'll have the 8x x minus y to the power of 3 divided by 2x x minus y to the power of 1. x's cancel out. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 3 minus 1 gives us 2. So over here, that would be left like that. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, it looks all fine to me. Right, and now all that's left is to expand that square bracket and then simplify it. Right? And there's nothing else we can really factor out of that. So we'd have 2x, x minus y. Uh, this would be what? x squared plus 2x squared minus 2xy, right? If we distribute that 2x inside the bracket. Then we'll have 4. x minus y squared gives us x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. If you FOIL those two brackets out, distribute the 4 inside. So I'll actually, yeah, I'll just write that over here, that distributed term. Right, this portion turns into that portion. There's a plus here. Then from here, you can look for the like terms inside the square bracket. Uh, so we would have x squared, 2x squared, that's 3x squared, 4x squared. So that would end up being 7x squared. So that is gone. This whole thing became this thing, so I'm just going to cross it out there. Uh, minus 2xy minus 8xy gives us minus 10xy. So those are gone. And then we got that 4y squared at the end. Then this here doesn't factor smoothly. 7 times 4 is 28. There's no two numbers that multiply to 28 and add up to negative 10, any whole integer numbers. Um, yeah, like 7 and 4 minus 7 minus 4 wouldn't work because that would be negative 11, not negative 10. All right, so this doesn't factor anymore. So this here is the simplified uh, expression of all of this. So the greatest common factor was the 2x 
x minus y, we had to play around with this a bit to get it as that bracket, take everything out, and then you just have to simplify that remaining bracket.